You guys need to see this. Several months ago, a random termite nuptial flight happened at a cottage I was staying at, and I managed to capture a ton of paired termite kings and queens who had just gotten married, so to speak. These wedded kings and queens had just one mission, to start a massive termite kingdom of their own underground. Now I placed these wedded termite pairs into test tubes where they went on to lay eggs, and these eggs later hatched to produce tiny termite worker babies. So cute. Anyway, I later found out that these termites weren't the type of termites that fed on wood, like the pestiferous termites that everyone hates. Instead, these termites belonged to the termite genus Macrotermes, whose food source was mainly fungus. But these termites depending on fungus posed one problem. You see, the fungus the termites eat is not just any fungus, but specifically a termite fungus that in nature can only be found in the nests of these Macrotermes termites. The fungus was a symbiotic fungus to the termites. Where was I to get this special termite fungus? Some of you termite experts informed me that although the manner in which these termites start their fungus gardens within their nests is highly debated among termite scientists, it is thought that the termites in starting nests actually go out and collect debris from the environment that contains spores that come from the mushrooms of the termite fungus that sprout from the termite hills of other Macrotermes nests. Others speculated that the fungus spores from the birth nests of the kings and queens are actually carried within them, within special hidden pockets somewhere on their bodies, which seed the new fungus gardens, which is actually what fungus-eating ants do when starting new nests and symbiotic fungus. I didn't know, but when I spotted a huge fungus garden growing in the test tube of one of the termite pears, I decided to unplug the test tube and bury it into soil. Not sure if the mold in the test tube was actual termite fungus or not, but if it was, I knew we'd soon see a termite mound from within this small terrarium. I decided I would not disturb this terrarium for the next few weeks or months, but keep checking it for signs of a termite mound forming. This is where we left off. So AC family, here is an update on our termites since we last saw them over a month ago. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. Okay, so termites might not be as cool to some people as ants, but hear me out. Watching these termite colonies grow from just a king and queen has been such an eye-opener. And though termites and ants may be different creatures, seeing as termites are more related to roaches than they are to ants, in my books, termites are equally as cool as ants. And perhaps by the end of this video, you guys will think so too. I will be asking you guys a very important question and will be needing your advice at the end of the video to help me make a decision regarding the fate of these termites. So do keep on watching until the end. So AC family, remember what the termites looked like in the last video of them? They were tiny, kinda helpless, and completely white. But guys, check out what the termite colonies look like now. It's crazy! Each of the termite colonies now have these massive workers with brownish heads and visible jaws. Look at them! The workers seem to be very attentive at caring for the younger siblings. The king and queen themselves are also helping with caring for the young. And it does look like there is still a big batch of eggs, all waiting to hatch. Now termites are different from ants because termites undergo incomplete metamorphosis, which means they don't have a larval wormy type stage when they hatch from their eggs, nor a pupal stage like in ants. Instead, when the termites hatch from the egg, they're just little tiny nymphs, as they're called in science, and these nymphs look like smaller versions of their adult forms, and simply grow bigger and bigger. I loved watching the larger workers carrying the eggs and nymphs. This test tube was full of busy babysitters. I also loved seeing the different stages of termite worker growth. And the ant lover in me couldn't help but think, 
Man, those juicy termites would be great food for my ants. Sorry guys, but I know all ant keepers out there are thinking the exact same thing. Don't lie. Actually, one of the reasons I wanted to keep a termite colony was to provide my ant colonies a good nutritious source of food. Termites are an excellent protein source for ants. And once these colonies get big enough, I'll be harvesting workers to feed my ants for sure. Especially these fat, juicy macrotermies termites. Now, some of you guys might be wondering, okay, so if they eat fungus usually, how is it possible that these termites are growing? What has this colony been eating all this time? Good question. My answer is, I'm not exactly 100% sure. But if these macrotermies termites are like ants, then the food has been coming from the royals. You see, queen ants starting new colonies have food stores within their thorax, muscle tissue that was used to power their wings during their nuptial flight are liquefied and fed to the larvae in order to raise their first generation of workers who then break out into the world and bring food back home to the queen and the rest of the colony. And that is how the colonies start. But with these termites, I don't know if that's the case. I suspect it is. Or perhaps the termites have been feeding on cotton fibers in the meantime? I did catch termites chewing on discarded wings in the past, so I don't know. The termite kings and queens look pretty fat, so I wouldn't be surprised if they too were liquefying their own body tissues to feed their starting colony of workers. Until they were large and plentiful enough to go out foraging for fungus. Any termite experts out there, please feel free to chime in with your input in the comments. I'd love to know how these colonies have been growing and what they've been eating. As for the huge workers, they truly looked interesting. I don't see any eyes, so I suspect they're blind. Maybe not. I do also notice they're pretty clumsy walking on glass and often get trapped on their backs, but eventually write themselves up. Now I wonder if these workers will continue to grow into larger forms of workers. Wouldn't it be awesome to see some of these workers turn into those massive super major termites with humongous heads and jaws? Or perhaps the form of termites with those guns on their heads that shoot out a sticky defensive slime. Termites have all sorts of cool specialized workers, which I find to be pretty neat. Only time would tell if these workers would evolve into cooler, higher forms. Now in the past, I had thought that I could tell which of the two termite royals was the king and which was the queen. But now I'm not so sure. If I were to guess right now, perhaps the one on the left is the queen? She looks slightly larger. What do you guys think? Whatever the case, both seem to share duties taking care of the babies. Something that doesn't happen in ants, because in ants, the males die right after mating, and ant queens are left to raise their colonies on their own. Another cool thing about termites, I think. And so, AC family, with several of these termite colonies now at this stage, where we have some pretty large workers, I don't know where to go from here. If it is true that the termites will need to forage for debris with spores, what should I do? Unplug these test tubes and connect them to an outworld of some sort? Where am I to get the spore-laden debris? In my mind, it would require me to go back to the area where they were collected and look for termite mounds with mushrooms growing on them and simply collect the soil around these mounds? Is that right? My next question is, when do I do this? I don't want to connect these test tubes to outworlds too early. Should I just wait until the workers look like they're adamant at digging out of their test tubes, pulling at the cotton? Right now, it does not look like any digging is happening at all within the test tubes. The termite colonies seem to be more concerned with colony growth at this present time. I'm guessing once this test tube is full and bursting with workers, they will be ready to forage. But when I do see signs of them wanting out of their test tubes, it is probably a good indicator that I should also go termite mushroom hunting in the area I found them, around the cottage. Perhaps nature perfectly times it so the mushrooms sprout around the time these new starting termite colonies are ready to forage. I wouldn't be surprised because Mother Nature is brilliant that way. Anyway, AC family, do let me know what you guys think I should do in terms of what the next steps should be for these termite colonies. 
I do wish there was a handbook or more information out there on rearing these very unique termites. Ant keeping has definitely grown and developed so much over the past 10 or so years. So we have a pretty good idea about growing ant colonies from scratch. But termites? Mm, not so much, it seems. Which makes it even more important that we try keeping these termites, despite not quite knowing exactly what we're doing. But with your help, perhaps we will one day succeed at growing these macro termites colonies into a massive mature colony. And when we do, it will all have been recorded for other curious minds to try out the same thing. Also, I do find it is important to spread more awareness on these insects, which like ants have received a bad rap due to a few species being domestic pests. But the fact is, the majority of the world's termite species aren't pests and want nothing to do with the wood in your home. Like ants, termites are extremely important components to the ecosystems they're from. So the big question is, would you want to keep a termite colony in your home? I'll continue to keep you updated on the progress of these hopeful starting termite colonies in test tubes, as well as the one I buried into soil. Thank you all for watching and supporting the ants and termites. It's ant and termite love forever.